We are going to look at uh, what happens when you have a function and you replace x with some number times x, b times x. So, for example, you have, again, let's just use f of x. If you change that to a number like y equals 2x or y equals, oops, y equals uh, 0.5x or anything like that, right? So we're going to look at two different cases where you have a number uh, larger than 1 and you have a number smaller than 1, all right? Now I'm just picking 2 and 0.5 for kind of convenience, but any number, right? So if we uh, if we look at the graph now, uh, again, we have, we're using this kind of wacky function here, um, but let's not worry about the equation. We're just going to call it f of x for simplicity, right? So I defined it as f of x equals this, all of this stuff. And then we can just say f of x. And now if we want to write a transformed function, all we need to write is y equals f of, and we're going to put f of 2x first. If I put f of 2x, now you notice that blue one, uh, that blue one has been... Uh, Let's uh, zoom in on this a bit more. Um, that blue one has been compressed, but it's been compressed horizontally. All right, all the points have come in closer to the y-axis. All right, this has been compressed horizontally, as in this point right here. Uh, let's look at some coordinates and points there. Four, negative four six has become negative two six. The x coordinates have changed. Right, this point here that's 4, negative 2 has become 2, negative 2, right? And so on. 1, negative 4. Oops, I have trouble finding the end there, but you get the idea. It's, you know, 5, negative 4, more or less, if I could manage to get right on the end. And so on, right? Now, there's one point that hasn't changed, this point right here on the y-axis. That's, that's, again, that's an invariant point because on either function, it's 0, negative 2. That has not changed. All right. When you put a number, when you replace x with 2x, it actually compresses. It makes the function smaller. All right. Now you're going to find no, you're going to find then if we put f a half. Oops, not one over x. <laughs> a half x. Um, it's actually made it. Uh, oops. Let's zoom out so we can see what's going on. It's uh, it's expanded this now. It's expanded it horizontally. It's not any taller. It's still only up to there. It's not. It doesn't go down any farther. So nothing's happened vertically. It's happened horizontally. It's all the points have gotten twice as far away from this y-axis. Okay, the points are going away from the y-axis. They're 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 mapped to points that are farther away from the y-axis. But we call this a horizontal expansion or a horizontal stretch. All right. When you replace x with a number that's multiplied but it's smaller than one the function actually gets wider all right x to half x function is wider now why why does that happen um, that when you put the number smaller it makes the thing bigger and when you when you have a number that's bigger multiplied by x it actually makes it smaller uh, we can look at the the points to find out here so this is where this is a table where we're changing f of x to f of 2x this function this f represented all those crazy operations. Let's just go back here for one second, right? All this ab, you know, absolute value, x minus 3 times 2, blah, 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 blah. If, uh, if now you're going to start with, um, if I want to get this same y value here, if I want to end up with a 6 here, right? I want to end up with that same y value because if we look at the picture, the y values haven't changed. But if I want to end up with this same y value here, and the first thing I'm going to do before I apply that crazy function is I'm going to multiply the x value by 2, right? This says x times 2. If the first thing I'm going to do is multiply it by 2, i got to start with something that's half as big here, right? I have to start with something that's half as big. Instead of negative 4, I've got to put negative 2, and that's going to give me the same y value. Over here, if I'm going to start with uh, negative 3 to give me 4, what do I have to start with here? I have to start with negative 1.5. I have to start with something that's half as big. Because the first thing I'm going to do is double it before I put it in the function. If I take this, double it, put it in there, it turns out with exactly what I got over there. Now, if we continue this over here, uh, down to there, I think. And we continue this over here. Let's see if that works. 
sort of works. Got a bunch of extra lines in there, but that's okay. Uh, we can fix that very quickly, not that it matters. Um, all these points, all the x values, if you pick any pair of numbers here now, uh, if you pick anything here, right, like that one, negative 2, 2 has turned into negative 1, 2, right? 2, negative 2 is 1, negative 2. For the same y values, the x values are half as much. And when you have x values that are half as much, it's going to mean that the, oops, now we got the one that doesn't correspond to what we were just doing. So we'll change that back to a 2 and we'll see, right? When you have, when you have x values that are half as much, it means all the points are half as far away from the, from the center here, from the, uh, from the y-axis, right? So don't get confused. This is a horizontal compression by a factor of a half. But you could say it's a, it's a compression about the y-axis or, or from the y-axis or to the y-axis. It's being compressed towards the y-axis. Now, if we do this one, let's look at the points again here. Negative 4, 6. If the first thing I'm going to do is multiply the points by a half, right, 0. 0.5, and I want to get that same 6 here. If I want to get the same 6 right here, i got to start with something twice as big here. So instead of negative 4, I have to put negative 8. I have to put something twice as big to get that same value. If this was normally negative 3, i got to put negative 6 here, something twice as big twice as big because the first thing I'm going to do is cut it in half before I apply that function. And if you continue this down, of course, you get, um, you're going to get the same thing here. And if we continue this down, I guess I don't need to continue the other column down there. And we have those values, right, that are, what have I done here? Um, I'll fix that again. So you see that for all these same, all these y values are the same in both tables. But to get those same y values, you need to start with something that's twice as big. Negative 2, 2 goes to negative 4, 2. And 3, 0 goes to 6, 0, right? Now the invariant point is this one where that has an x value of 0. It's the one that's on the y axis. Okay, invariant points here have x values that are 0. And that was when we did it this way. All right. So that is horizontal expansions and compressions. All right. And again, just to recap, it's what happens when you replace x with some number times x in there. And it works the opposite way, right? If, uh, if that b value is larger than 1, so the B value is 2 or 3 or 10 or something like that. B value is larger than 1. It's a horizontal compression, right? Because it kind of works the opposite. You've seen that before where it works sort of the opposite to what you might intuitively expect. It's a horizontal compression by, if you want to be technical here, you could say by 1 over B, right? If that's a 2, and it's a compression by a half, 1 over 2. If it's a 5, it's a compression by 1 over 5. And then if B is less than 1, it's a horizontal expansion. And it's the same thing here where it's the reciprocal of that. If that's a half, then this is a 2. So this is still the reciprocal, 1 over B. Now I'm going to put greater than zero because if it was less than zero and negative then the only difference would be um, you'd also have a you'd also have a reflection but we're going to get to that um, a little later on all right